I want to greet the chair and the co-panelists and the audience. Uh, in the face of the rising populism and extremism, should democracy be neutral or militant? I will focus my brief presentation on political parties and constitutions. Elkins wrote that regulations of, the regulation of parties is a dangerous game, one played both by democracies and non-democracies alike. The experiences of the world wars brought political and legal consequences regarding political parties and the envision of democracy per se. One of the most vicious faces of Nazism, Joseph, Joseph Goebbels, ridiculed the Weimar legal arena while declaring that this will always remain one of the best jokes of democracy, that it gave its deadly enemies the means by which it was destroyed. Following the resistance to totalitarianism and authoritarianism, democracy could hardly become an agnostic or uh, relativistic concept. Of course, all political parties aim at conquering power. However, some use the legal arena to later fulfill their illiberal or anti-democratic agendas. In the first half of the last century, Karl Lovenstein wrote his famous militant democracy approach to fascism, arguing that fire should be fought, fought with fire. Um, in this sense, legal orders should ensure that the enemies of democracy will not be able to exploit the freedoms inherent to democracy. Joining this never again mentality, Karl Mannheim, another uh, German um, that, that of Jewish of, uh, origin exiled in the US, offered his sociological diagnosis in the reflection, the third way, a militant democracy. He clearly wrote that the principle of laissez-faire will not help us any further, and that our democracy has to become militant if it is to survive. In this sense, he believed that it was possible to create a pioneering and militant type, which is not fanatical, an emotional type whose emotions, and we very well know how emotions are important in populism, but th these emotions would be more than displaced fears. Jurisdictions that have not experienced totalitarianism and authoritarianism might be warier of the militant democracy model. In fact, the American scholarship considered the concept of militant democracy one of the most startling aspects uh, to an observer for, on, of the other side of the Atlantic. On the contrary, other fails, others fail to see the, the, the validity of militant democracy in contemporary societies. Uh, this concept raised acute critique. Um, some label militant democracy as paternalist, since it treats the electors as incapable of determining for themselves the merits of different positions and eliminates public discussion on all political perspectives. So it deprives people for, for, of effective citizenship. Others argue that there is an uh, irreductible uh, element of arbitrariness when deciding who are the enemies of democracy. There are also uh, strong uh, reasons uh, grounded, uh, grounded within philosophical liberalism um, that advocate against outlawing uh, political parties, for instance, on the basis of their ideology only. Um, to Mueller, militant democracy cannot be legitimized or normalized as, as it requires the use of illiberal measures. Um, others argue that instead of excluding problematic parties, they should, these parties should be welcomed in the democratic arena with hopes that they will become more moderate. So uh, the, the, the parties should uh, offer better arguments to, uh, to, 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 uh, so that the people won't vote in these uh, very uh, extremist, extremist parties. We know that political parties are crucial to the democratic system at best. Party bans proscribing parties are is the most visible form of preemptive defense to the political rights of, a, of the future generation. At worst, party bans are a form of tyranny. In post-war uh, European constitutional history, the most muscular forms of militant democracy, which are party bans, but there are other aspects as, such as states of emergency, eternity clauses, and so on. Uh, were beforehand an instrument, instrument of symbolic politics. As we will see, as the democratic consolidation progressed, some high courts decided not to ban parties of marginal political relevance. Uh, this is also, also the guideline of the Venice Commission, 
uh, on uh, the prohibition of the dissolution of political parties. It, it's, it says that um, prohibition should be used with the utmost restraints. So they recommend parsimony and as far as possible, a less radical measure than banning political parties. So I will now briefly address uh, three cases, uh, Germany, Israel, and Greece. Um, so Germany, uh, the, the German constitution, as we all know, it has a lot of militant traits. Uh, the, the Socialist Reich Party in 1953 was uh, prohibited. It, it was a party with a neo-Nazi orientation. Um, the Bundesverfassungsgericht, the, the, the uh, German Federal Constitutional Court, considered that uh, this ex exclusion was justified because um, uh, the supreme fundamental values of liberal democracy uh, were as, at stake. So and this party had a, an undemocratic and racist political agenda. Contrary to Austria or Portugal, in which uh, respectively only neo-Nazi or in Portugal only, only fascist parties were prohibited, in Germany the pendulum swung back and forth to the extreme left and to the extreme right. So the first dissolution was of the, the, the extreme right party. The second dissolution, and this was highly more polemical, uh, was about was on the the communist party so um this is one uh, this was one of the longest opinions of the bundesverfassungsgericht almost 1300 uh, uh, 1308 pages um and the, the court found that the ultimate goals of the party which was proletarian dictatorship and revolution were incompatible with the free democratic base, uh, basic order but what was curious was that the Communist Party had only two points uh, in the popular vote for the Bundestag election and was not a menace at the time of his banning. Um, in the two following cases regarding the proscription of political parties, it was the radical groups case in which three radical left-wing left parties were denied campaign broadcasting in some German states. The court decided that such denial threatened the principle of equality of opportunity granted to every political party. So dismissed the case. The second case, it was also dismissed. It was uh, the case of the extreme right-wing party, National Democratic Party. And uh, as this party had a shy parliamentary representation and declining membership, uh, its actions would not succeed in mobilizing the right-wing extremist movement. So it, this is interesting because the federal constitutional court went from a sheer militant democracy stance to a more mitigated or rhetorical uh, resort to militant democracy. So one can wonder if this means that um, this has something to do with the evolving maturity of German democracy. Regarding the Israel case, this is a quite astonishing case because in Israel, there is this paradox. On the one hand, the basic law and the ordinary law, the party's law, militantly allow an easy disqualification of terror supporting parties. Ban can be, bans can be approved merely by, for illegitimate political speech. But on the other hand, though, the Supreme Court of Israel adopts a neutral stance, does not adhere to the legal militant democracy model, uh, um, and states that proscribing of political parties must be reserved when there is an unequivocal proof of terroristic actions, uh, uh, in line with the, the jurisprudence also of the European Court of uh, Human Rights. Um, the Greeks, the, the example uh, of, of the Greeks, I think is the Greece is relevant for, we all know that for historical reasons, the Greek constitution does not allow the dissolution of political parties, uh, party banning recall the memory of anti-communism and, and dictatorial oppression in Greece. Um, but the Golden Dog case provoked a renewed uh, interest in whether it, should, it would be wise to introduce militant democratic provisions. Um, uh, Golden Dawn in 2012 won 21 seats in parliament. And how did the, 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 um, the Greeks uh, solve this problem? Well, instead of a constitutional issue, they, they, they transformed this uh, problem in, uh, they de dealt with extremism within political parties by a nexus of criminal and administrative law. So political measures were adopted to tackle, were adopted to tackle uh, racist violence, so such, such as creating special units within the police, 
um, uh, there were criminal proceedings that took place uh, uh, against the Golden Dawn, and in 2020, um, several uh, several members of the Golden Dawn and the leadership were uh, were um, ruled jail sentences for all defendants. Um, and there were, there was also rules for public funding of political parties that were amended to incorporate a temporary suspension of financial financial support in the event of criminal prosecutions. So uh, as we have a little time and to conclude, um, illimited relativism, or as I prefer to call it, the absolutism of relativism can challenge the enforcement of human rights and the quality of democracy. So social inequalities, corruption, and populism are so very much a threat uh, or even a reality, even in the so-called consolidated democracies. The democratic project is perhaps never entirely fulfilled. And during the first half of the last century, when addressing the peoples of the subjugated countries of Europe, many intellectuals believed that only militant democracy could win this war, which after all is a war of ideas. A strict procedural democracy is an unsatisfying response. Merely striking down militant democracy without offering alternatives is a form of political quietism, and I'm citing uh, Schuppmann. Militant democracy and party banning might not be the most you know, intellectually sophisticated and normative dense strategy to restrain uh, illiberal democracy, but at least it offers a solution, even if it is a fragile solution. There is, um, it concludes, there is a symbiotic relationship between democracy and parties. We need democracy in order to maintain parties and we need parties in order to maintain democracy. Perhaps we should wonder if political parties exist within evolving societies, it means that political parties themselves can evolve. Thank you so much.